Hello everybody, my name is Valerie and I'm a real Prague guide. We always talk about great things you can find in Prague, but today we decided to change it up a little bit and we are going to talk about worst rated attractions and tourist sites you can see in Prague. If you type on Google worst rated attractions in Prague, one website will come up. It's called toprated.online. So we use that one for our today's video. We will link it down below so you can find the lists and I guess never go to the places that are listed there, even though it's up to you. Okay, so let's go from the best of the worst. So from bottom up. We should also probably mention that a lot of the things that we found on these lists are not actually considered attractions in our opinion. We found a lot of uh, bus tours and other companies on the list, so we don't want to trash <laughs> bad companies in Prague. So we're going to skip those and really focus on attractions and sites. Okay, let's start. Number 23 or whatever. Uh, number one of the best of the worst is Adolf Loos Apartment and Gallery. Adolf Loos. Adolf Loos. Adolf Loos. Adolf Loos. What a great surname. Was he Loos in his private life? First of all, where is it located? Adolf Loos Apartment and Gallery is located in the Exhibition Hall of Manes. It is actually standing on the riverbank of Prague next to the Dancing House and also next to the water tower called Shitkov Tower. <laughs> Shit, shit. Sorry, I'm not five years old. It is a functionalist building, so it's definitely a very niche interest, we could say. Adolf Luz was a designer and an architect, and he designed an apartment inside. So why is it rated so bad? Let's have a look at some reviews. An obscure snobbish business, ideally far removed from the pre-war manis who built the building. Okay, all right. And the second one, they charge 130 crowns to show you just the living room and throw you out in five minutes. Okay, let's go to the next one. It is Image Blacklight Theater. Interestingly, there are two Blacklight Theaters on that list. Another one is uh, a bit higher, which means it's worse. For those of you who don't know what is a Blacklight Theater, it was originally called Black Theater. You can guess why they decided to rename that. And it originated in Asia. You cannot really see much what's going on on the stage, only parts that are illuminated. So it can be costumes of the performers or certain objects on the stage. Let's see the reviews. One notice the work behind it, but no concept or logic can be seen, but rather sexism and tasteless. All right, <laughs> very positive. Uh, what did I expect? Uh, let's look at the reviews of Another Blacklight Theater. Number 21 worst reviewed tourist attraction in Prague. What an honor. The level of dance technique is very low. Dancers are rigid and lack rhythm and fluidity, particularly the men. <laughs> talking about sexism. The actors were good, but the story was a bit silly. The light performance in the show had a span from very good to okay. Okay, so it seems like the biggest concern of the visitors of this theater is the quality of dance techniques there, which is kind of mean, and also the storyline. If you were looking forward to visiting Blacklight Theater, I don't think you should be discouraged because there are many and you can really pick and choose and find the best ones. Check out the Blacklight Theater Sirnets. It is supposed to be the original one and uh, see for yourself. We were not paid to say this, it's just according to TripAdvisor, it's the best one. Next one is the Magical Cave. All right, the original name is actually Magical Cavern. It is located in the middle of Petrin Hill. It's kind of difficult to find because it's sort of hidden by the trees, but it looks very cool from the outside. You have sort of these fawn vibe going on there with vases. But let's see the reviews. It is attractive in a creepy, dreamy way. That's a good way to describe this one. Tourist trap not worth three euros. We tried to visit this place two times on two different days and it was closed each time. Maybe the artist was on some acid trip and he forgot to <laughs> open up. A clear example of tourist trap. I don't, I don't really know what people would expect from a place called Magical Cavern. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't agree that it's a tourist trap. It's exactly what you pay for <laughs> in this, in they this place. They have free drinks in the cellar. Do they have free yeah, drinks? Yeah, sangria for free. 
Oh yeah, I remember that. I didn't drink it just <laughs> because I'm a woman <laughs> and I'm visiting a magical cave. <laughs> I'm not drinking any free drinks there. Hell no. If you are into elves, fairies and nudity, definitely go there. Oh, and free drinks, free sangria. Definitely visit. Okay, next one is Museum of Medieval Torture Instruments of Prague. And just above it, Museum of Alchemists and Magicians of Old Prague. Okay, Museum of Medieval Torture Instruments. That one is located next to Charles Bridge. Overpriced for what it offers. Some interesting information, most exhibits from Austria. Some specialists went there, clearly. And spelling mistakes on the plaques. Would have rather saved the eight euros. So it costs eight euros to go there. That is very interesting how some people would like it to be more detailed. Boring and low effort. People should suffer more, this review says. <laughs> very poor exhibition, very dark, can't read the explanations. It would be usually dark in a torture chamber, I imagine. Okay, but let's move to the Museum of Alchemists and Magicians for Old Prague. That one is located on Jansky Vršek, that's in Mala Strana. Very cool area to visit, actually, a lot of beautiful buildings. If you really want to see how the life looked like in Prague 300 years ago, go to Malastrana. Okay, so again, a lot of good reviews. The general rating for this one is 3.7. So it's not terrible, it's just bad. So a lot of people say you should get a, a drink here. All right, okay, for in a museum. You know what, it seems like that uh, a lower quality museums like to give you cheap drinks. So I guess you get drunk and have a better experience there. That's a good approach. Apart from being located in a dingy attic instead of a dingy basement, so people like to go to basements. I really don't see eye to eye with them. This is exactly the same type of tourist trap. Avoid at all costs. Okay, so this review is more detailed. Let's see. Went here yesterday and was not impressed at all. The first room had lots of posters with small writing on them, detailing the history of alchemy. This person didn't like to read, uh, obviously. However, it was impossible to concentrate on what was being said because of of the women who worked there, walked up and down the length of the first room talking very loudly on her mobile phone the entire time. Sorry for misjudging you, dear reviewer, who I thought didn't like to read. You like to read, it's just other people who work in that museum bother you. After putting up with this for 10 minutes, we left in disgust. Disgust! <laughs> we left in disgust. That's disgusting. <laughs> okay, guys, moving on. Woodrow Wilson Monument. I think it is the first monument on that list, and it has 3.6 stars. Woodrow Wilson Monument is located actually in the main train station, close to Prague city center and Wenceslas Square. The reason for such a strange location is the fact that the main train station in Prague used to be named after Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson was a crucial figure during the establishment of independence of Czechoslovakia during First World War. We are actually gonna leave the main train station talk until a bit further because there is something that we want to mention there, but let's uh, read the reviews. Why in this place? Okay. Now you know why. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it starts with A stupidly. A stupid, stupid. A stupidly placed statue to look in Prague. It should be moved somewhere and a pavement should be built in its place. So some uh, critique of architectonic placement of this statue. This is definitely a very patriotic person who left this review. Our ancestors, the founders of Czechoslovakia, thought well that every visitor arriving by train to Prague would see our gratitude to the American president who finally nodded Czechoslovak independence. They built a beautiful monument. Today, the statue is a silent witness to the worst thing in society you will come across in Verklitsky Gardens at the main train station. And yeah, we're gonna talk about it in a minute. Next up is Mirror Maze in Petrin Park. Okay, let's see the reviews. It is a beautiful building from the outside and inside. However, the price for five minutes of walking through the underwhelming mirror maze is way too high. Don't waste your money. Oh dear, I expected so much more. This was way too expensive and short, like really short. This eighth maze. <laughs> This is a walk with mirrors on the side. Two stars, one for the dizzy mirrors at the end and one for nice 2.5D 
2.5D battle image reconstruction. But nobody really is talking about the history of the building. It's actually a replica of the original gate from Visegrad called Spichka. Spichka means something pointy. So because this gate had a lot of spires and pointy towers, it was nicknamed that way. And the original gate was built during the time of Charles IV, but then destroyed. And that was a replica created for the Prague exhibition. And then it was moved to the Petrine Hill. Next one is another museum of torture and torture instruments. We're gonna skip that one because we know what was the problem, right? People wanted to be bloodier and creepier and they didn't get what they wanted. That one I was uh, surprised to find there, but at the same time, not so much because it is Strahov Library. We actually wrote a blog post about it. So if you want to find out more about this library, click the link in the description. Normally when we have tours around Prague, we receive a question, where is that beautiful library once in every two or three days? And people normally talk about the Strahov Library that is mentioned in this review, or the library in Clementinum complex. They're both very beautiful libraries, don't get me wrong, and I think if you really want to see them, you should go nevertheless. However, one thing that the websites that describe the visits to these libraries failed to mention is the fact that you cannot actually go inside of the libraries and walk around there. So when we look at the reviews of Strauf Library, we can see really a lot of positive ones. And of course, as expected, negative reviews come from people who are under the impression that they will be able to walk around and snap photos of old volumes. Unlike the picture gallery of the monastery, it is super crowded, so expect Mona Lisa level of pushing and shoving for your selfies. <laughs> Just a small corridor with two open doors to look from the doorstep, a ridiculous tourist ripoff, not to say fraud. <laughs> Next review. We are extremely disappointed. We arrived at Strahov Library in the morning. They accept only cash. We were prepared for that. Like in many places in Prague, it happened before. But they do not have change. I wanted to pay with 1000 crowns banknote and had to ask random people for help. Finally, we got in paint 150 crowns per person, six doors, but it's not possible to approach the book stands. You can only look from a distant perspective to see the whole library, that's all. We saw two people inside the library and we went to complain, but the lady said that you need online reservation to get there. I checked the Strahov website before our visit and I did not find any information about prior reservation. If you like to take the photos, you need to pay extra 50 crowns, two doors. In my opinion, it is not worth the visit. It is true that it is really difficult to book a private visit to the library itself. I was only there once uh, with a guiding school. I could definitely see some jealous people that were pointing fingers at us and asking the staff how come they were able to go there. But let's finish with Strauf Library and let's go to the two last worst attractions in Prague. The second worst is the Cubist Kiosk next to the main train station in Prague. I'm actually really surprised to even find that kiosk on that list, but it's true that it's kind of rare. It's a rare example of cubism in uh, such a small building. It is not really well preserved, but I think that is the least of concern of people who left it a bad review. A lot of people complain about uh, changing money there, but the biggest problem for me is the location of that kiosk, because it is located next to the main train station, same as the Woodrow Wilson monument. The gardens around the main train station are like the hotspot for homeless people. There's even a bar next to it called Sherwood Forest, because that garden resembles the Sherwood Forest, especially at night. And I mean, no wonder, train stations usually attract this uh, kind of uh, groups and they hang out a lot there, even during the daytime when it's really busy. So let me give you some tips. If you need to go to the Prague main train station, you have to go through that park unless you take the metro and exit directly inside the train station. When you go through the park, just go, don't look around, don't stop, and definitely don't sit on benches. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but just trust me on that one. And if uh, homeless people start talking to you, don't respond. The grand finale, the worst attraction in Prague is the check post. 
hardly an attraction somehow ended up on that list long story short if you are looking for a friendly chat with some czech speakers definitely don't go to the post office these people have a lot going on during their day so they are not the most polite people that you can meet in prague not all of them not all of them. I know that some people actually have Czech post office on their lists when they come to Prague. I think it's because of the main building of the post office located next to the Wenceslas Square. It is really beautiful inside. Let's read the reviews. I want to give them minus 1000 stars. They are the rudest, angriest, and most incompetent employees at any post office I've visited in Czech Republic. Not only can many of them speak English, but just refuse to because they want to be difficult, lazy, or obstinate. <laughs> but they make a concerned effort to make the entire postal experience as bureaucratic as possible. It's literally a black hole. Okay, here we go, guys. These are the worst rated attractions in Prague. Okay, so we'll reveal, reveal the whole list here. These are the worst rated attractions in Prague. I hope this was helpful or at least funny and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!